Hello everyone, this is Amit Sharma from Swar and I have with me uh, Mr. Ishwar Dadwani, founder of Unmold Jewelers, a first generation jewelry entrepreneur who launched Unmold Jewelers in the year 1986. And today it has become synonymous with the best brands in the country and among the most celebrated brands among the jewelry lovers. Hello, Mr. Ishu. We welcome you today at this talking session with Swar Media. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Ishu, my first question to you would be, what motivated you to venture into the jewelry business? So, quite honestly, the initial reason for joining the jewelry business was more out of a financial consideration. Mm -hmm. I, as a young college-going uh, you know, I had a lot of enterprise in me and uh, while in college, I had a friend who was, you know, his father was a diamond manufacturer mm -hmm. and that business kind of fascinated me. And uh, so I thought it's a way, good way of making money. And that is the reason I joined the business All right. to make money. Okay. All right, because when we, we talk about your brand, I think it all comes up to the mind is about the designs and that's the beauty of the whole industry. Right. So Anmol pioneered the shift of jewelry from being a commodity to a piece of art by adding design yeah. element to it. What are your future goals and endeavors for your jewelry business? So, uh, first of all, you know, the reason we uh, latched on to design and, uh, you know, made that our USP was because, you know, when we started 36 years back, there were people who were in the business for generations True. and um, you know we realized that for us to be of reckoning there has to be s some usp that we bring to the table mm -hmm. and uh, we realized that design is is a key element in uh, you know converting a, or making a, a, a sale so right. that's how you know this the and then of course the passion came in and we were, and we still are very, very passionate about uh, our designs and workmanship and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's how design became a very a pivotal part of our journey. Okay. So, I uh, wanted to understand like, what are your future goals to take this brand? So, you know, the future goal, honestly, right now is first of all, currently what we're doing, we're working on is uh, systemizing ourselves. So, what we've realized is that, you know, we, we had opened a couple of stores in Delhi, Gurgaon, mm -hmm. and subsequently we shut them because there were uh, operational issues. Mm -hmm. And what we have realized now is that, you know, for us to do well, we first need to have our systems in place. So what happens is when you're sitting in a place like in Bombay in, at a flagship store, I'm sitting myself, it's a little easier to manage and to control and, you know, to mm -hmm. take your decisions on a day-to-day -day basis sure. and things still work. But if you have to work remotely, you know, where you have a branch either in Delhi or in any other part of the country right. or overseas, it's important that our systems are in place. Right. And right now, that is what is happening. So we are working on uh, systemizing uh, Unmol. And uh, once that happens, then we will look at how to, you know, move across. And yeah. Okay. What changes have you made? Uh in your business strategies in the past few years when we talked about so you already mentioned about you know building in the system but apart from that we'd like to hear so the major you know the major shift has been see uh, covid also uh, showed us a few things and it opened our uh, minds to you know possibilities that one never ever thought would happen That's so uh, definitely the thought process uh, has changed and uh, you know, uh, but the biggest, the biggest change that we have brought about is our mindset mm -hmm. and which is, you know, that we need to now work on autopilot and uh, designs, of course, are our USP that will never stop. We will still work very hard on designs and mm -hmm. by design today, we just don't mean, you know, a particular design. We mean the workmanship, the weight of the product the elevation of the product you know mm -hmm. uh, different international trends so i can very proudly say today that in the last three years especially the last one year 
post the covid you know we we relaunched anmol we renovated anmol we we are calling it anmol 2.0 okay our facade is absolutely european and mm-hmm. what we have very strongly worked on is our designs sure. workmanship so which is one part of it which is you know the the product part of it because mm-hmm. i think for any brand to do well the oh. key element is the product is is the product oh. you know yes. clients will come in because they heard your name or the brand is popular or whatever it is That's but once true. they walk in if your product is not good you know yeah it does not matter. work of course the buying does not happen exactly so uh, so we've really worked very hard on that mm-hmm. and now we're working equally hard on on systems and on systemizing our uh, you know the entire process mm-hmm. since you are a retail brand and and simultaneously very strong focus on the design part of it so what drives uh, this brand and more how you get inspired you know building up one after the another beautiful collections so you know the process actually started see i told you i started uh, anmol because of monetary considerations and i'm i don't have i'm not apologetic about it i mean that is a fact you know money is important but what happened along the journey is that, that there was an incident that happened where i realized that design is key mm-hmm. for success beyond what is average success Sure. and once that mindset you know changed i became so passionate about this business and about design that mm-hmm. the entire focus was only on design 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 mm-hmm. so you know over the years also it's 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 a personality trait it's the nature of a person mm-hmm. i am very very uh, you know i believe in reinventing myself so every few years we change our uh, the decor of the store last year we've re- done a major renovation okay. and everything has changed you know the jewelry itself has changed mm-hmm. the packaging has changed the whole aesthetics has changed and we keep raising the bar you know so we always believe in reinventing ourselves so only then can you be you know in the reckoning because today even if you stay where you are you yes. actually get left behind because everybody else is going forward exactly so if you want to be you know yeah in the forefront you have to you know keep reinventing and you know exactly raising the bar which we do it very very you know effortlessly because it comes very naturally to us all right so what are the trends that you foresee which is happening in the coming year in the indian market so you know i'll tell you what so so far what has happened is indian market is not one market mm-hmm. indian market is you know if you do it in a sub uh, market there may be 30 markets every state is a market by itself and if you do it geographically also there will be like east west north south you know the the tastes are different okay. but what is happening in the last few years thanks to internet thanks to social media the youngsters are now veering towards similar taste mm-hmm. so earlier you know what would work in the south would not work in the north what would work in the east would not work in the west but mm-hmm. gradually there are certain segments that mm-hmm. are merging which is what we are seeing right. so for example bridal bridal is a very very strong segment for any jeweler of course so now we are seeing that the the you know the taste or the thought process of the bride is converging you know it's becoming similar mm-hmm. across geographical locations true mm-hmm. and that's what we are now trying to uh, work toward you know create mm-hmm. designs which will appeal to a bride from north because they do come to bombay to shop with us mm-hmm. a bride from the south because you know people from all over come to bombay is is a city where people want to come and you know they feel that the best designs are here mm-hmm. you know so we are not only catering to uh, clients and brides from bombay we are catering to clients from across india and even overseas a lot of you know international uh, non resident uh, you know uh, buyers come to us and you know their taste is as international as can be but there is still that little indian element that you know comes in and for jewelry 
they would always come back to you know to india either to bombay delhi wherever but mm-hmm. you know jewelry is a strong segment where they would not buy especially the bridal stuff from anywhere but but from india that is that is so true uh, what is your usp if i would love to understand like the kind of because even the jewelry have a vast variety so when we talk about your brand and more, what is the usp that drives and attract people so the usp is design 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 all right okay but now what we have come to represent is not only design as in the the look of the piece but the workmanship mm-hmm. the lightness of weight the right. flexibility the smoothness when you wear it right the way it fits so mm-hmm. basically it's the product it's a 360 degree product starting from design to every other aspect mm-hmm. and even to the way it is finally you know presented or put in the box the quality of the box and things like that the quality of the uh, you know shopping bag for right. every everything that's what a brand brings to the table right. so that is our usp so if a guest uh, walk into your store what all varieties he'll get to see here everything so we we have you know small items to big items and uh, also we have uh, a little bit of a lounge which we call the bijuterie lounge so that's an exclusive area where goods in that area we don't even display outside right. so these are meant for ultra hnis people mm-hmm. with taste you know our old regular customers mm-hmm. and these are very novel and very uh, different unusual pieces a lot of these pieces we don't even repeat so mm-hmm. you know the design element is is of a much higher caliber in this that is true anmol is based out in bombay at the moment and you are trying to restructure it uh, uh what are the chances like how soon are we able to see anmol in the different parts of the country so i think for the next maybe 6 to 8 months we are still going to take to work work on our systems mm-hmm. after that we will take a call and uh, you know the next generation has come in my daughter is now part of uh, anmol that's why also we call it anmol 2.0 Okay. so i think it'll be more her call because i am now i have reached a state where you know i want to uh, you know make a more work on autopilot and okay. then i can take a back seat where i will be involved with business but i am going to be more of a you know like the chairman of the board where oh, yeah. i give direction yeah. and i say this is how we should proceed but the execution will be done by mm-hmm. by you know trisha and by the team All and right. uh, you know we'll take that call maybe in the next 6 months All right. Do you also have plans to uh, explore overseas market also because yeah yes we do. Yes. Beautiful. And when we talk about the digitization and you know brands going global on internet do you have plans to come on e-commerce platform also for the people to Yes. Start? Yes, we already are. We have a website. Um right. but we you know are not concentrating as much on it. but all that is in the works you know everything is getting systemized so there will be somebody who will be in charge of that vertical and you will see things that will happen mm-hmm. all right so what are your predictions for the future of jewelry industry in india i think the future is fantastic mm-hmm. uh you know i honestly feel that the indian consumer is uh getting evolved mm-hmm. the correct word is evolved so i've been in the business now for 36 years and right. i have seen it from there to today where we are right. and we have gradually been evolving but the last 5 7 years we've evolved even at a faster uh, pace right and now thanks to actually thanks to digitalization thanks to social media thanks to internet thanks to travel yes the mindset of an average indian buyer is changing Mm-hmm. the youngsters think very differently the millennials have their very strong personal opinions and you know ideas and so it's actually going to be a very good time because like the west there will be a greater appreciation of of design and lesser uh, you know thinking about break up and you know what is the making and what is the resale and things like that because you know at the end of the day if it's good jewelry it's also a piece of art so there is a lot of time effort effort in designing that goes in which 
unfortunately up until now people were not willing to uh, put money on like you know they'd say okay you charge me for the gold for the making but why should i pay for the design part exactly yeah you know that's because between your breakups but yes. you go to a you know to a, a clothing uh, designer and there is no break up and there is a very strong design charge that is already built in into the product which is very difficult for us to do but gradually i i can see that shift it's yeah. happening yes yeah because in past few years we have also seen how men's have been actively involved in you know exploring jewelry as a category so what do you what's your take on this gender fluid which is trending these days it's it's very welcome you know and and everything is open today you know the good thing is people are not judging mm-hmm. you know earlier it used to be there was a lot of judgment now people even the they people themselves don't care they're different it's okay and neither do people you know it's a very good uh, uh, evolvement i would say again that people don't judge and that's nice and people are willing to wear men are willing to wear thick chains and you know flaunt their jewelry i mean that's that's good for the industry exactly it's really happening you know yes. i was recently watching this uh, show called dubai bling yes and you see the the chains and the you know diamond chains that men are wearing it's such a welcome move why oh. not yes yeah. i think i think we get to see lot more in indian market also because you know people are definitely with the help of internet are definitely motivating the directions yeah yes. and if you look at the culture the rajas and maharajas they Rajas. all wear so much jewelry they used to wear more jewelry than the women that is that is so true yeah. so it was it was uh, the end of the discussion today and i would love to thank you for allotting us time it was lovely talking to you thank sir. you It's Thank a pleasure. You. It's a pleasure. Same. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So with this, we come to an end to this beautiful conversation. Ishuji, I want to thank you and the entire team of Unknown Jewelers. All the very best for the future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, you are hearing Mr. Ishuji Dwani, the man behind the successful brand Unknown Jewelers. I am Mr. Sharma. Will be back soon with yet another successful personality from the gems and jewelry industry. Until then, goodbye. God bless. Thank you.